Hi everybody, I'm Michelle with Birdie Bloom and today I am doing an authentication video. This isn't going to be completely well-rounded, but I am going to break down a tip that I use uh, to help authenticate or determine that a bag is counterfeit. Uh, and that is called overstamping. And you might have heard the term, but we're gonna break down what that means. This is something that I found to be very helpful because I am not one who's going to remember every single good and bad font from Vintage Coach. Overstamping is something that I look at that I really like to see in a bag and we're gonna, I'm gonna just tell you how I do it and hopefully you can do it too, okay? I'd first like to go ahead and say that when you're authenticating a Vintage Coach bag, you've got to understand it's much more complicated than simply taking a style number that you see on your bag and entering it into Google, finding the same bag that you have in your hand and calling it good. It doesn't quite work that way. Not a bad place to start, but it doesn't work that way. There's a lot more intricate information in determining authenticity versus counterfeits, especially when you get a good counterfeit bag. Some are very obvious counterfeits, but not all. So just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, let's get into it. What is overstamping? What is this? And let's see if I can help you to really nail it down too, okay? It's one of my favorite things. So uh, Coach, Vintage Coach used a rotary stamp, which means that you're going to have numbers and letters and or letters in a circular stamp, right? So they could easily, when they wanted to change the number or the month code or whatever, they could just like, you know, rotate it down and you have a whole new stamp for your next bag. And that's what they use. I do see a lot of people um, concerned when they see an over stamp. Guys, that's my favorite thing. Um, but I see them concerned because it kind of might look maybe sloppy. And a lot of people get this idea that if something's not perfect in a vintage coach bag, because they are known to be really good quality, if it's not perfect, then it must be counterfeit. And that is not true either. These bags were handmade. Errors happen. And so do, you know, non-perfect stamps. There's a lot of different things we can get into with that, but we're gonna focus just on overstamping. I'm gonna to try to make this video not too long. Let's see. Okay, so first I wanna show you, I don't know why, but red, clear good red um, bag stamps just show up so much better in photos. So this is the first one I'm gonna show you. This is a good overstamping. And I'm gonna break it down for you. So what you see here is the number 782 dash seven nine four five first maybe i can give you a couple more tips what is that is there a style number in that absolutely not this is a random registration number how do i know there are no letters there are no letters these are all numbers so we know this to be a random registration number the month was never represented with a number okay so um what I am showing you here is a really, really beautiful overstamp. Mainly at the top, you can see an overstamp on the top, on the bottom, and both. But I am going to point out these key fixture, uh, features that help you to determine what a good overstamp is. I want you to look above um, the numbers eight and five. And what do you see above those numbers? you see dots and that is that's a good sign guys that's a really good sign you just see a little dot why would you just see a little dot above that well what number precedes eight that would be seven seven ends with just a little dot right um, and then same thing with five above five should be a four and what is the bottom of a four it's just going to be a little dot it's not going to be a line now look um, above the number two. That is where you see a straight line. I'm gonna tell you why I'm focusing on this in a little bit when we show you one of the bad creeds, but um, right above uh, a two, 
what number comes before that? That would be a one. And what does the bottom of a one look like? It's gonna be a straight line, right? And then I want you to look at above the seven. Not quite a straight line and it's not a dot, it's a curve. These are all really great signs in, a, in an authentic overstamped bag. Above a seven is gonna be a six, which should curve at the bottom, right? Um, I do wanna point out here, because I find it interesting, you know, this is done in a specific font. Um, if you look above number nine, that is a straight line. It's pretty straight. And I, you know, might initially find that weird because what, become, what comes before the number nine? That would be an eight. And eights, are they not typically curved? Well, you happen to have an eight in your number here. So look at that eight and look how both the top and the bottom of this particular font is more of a straight line versus a curve. So found that interesting, thought I'd point it out. But honestly, you don't even have to get that in depth. And I'm gonna show you why, because the bad over stamps, they are bad. They're not anywhere close to good. So if you can identify any, even if only one um, let number or letter is over stamped above another, because it could be kind of like an uneven stamping job, right? Uh, one side could be a little bit more heavier than the other. Even if there's only one that you can really identify, um, you're, and it's a good number, such as having just a dot above it, you're in good shape. But that is an example of a really beautiful overstamp. Love to see these. All right, so let's get into a bad overstamp, guys. Now I have a lot of examples of bad over stamps. Actually, I'm gonna show you some, just throw some pictures out. <clears throat> and I don't know if you notice, there is a common theme. If they look off, the more you look at, and maybe that's just because I've looked at a lot of them. But let's focus on this one right here. This number reads 0212-5, seven, eight. And well, it, what you're looking at is what would be considered a random registration number if it were authentic, but it's not. So that's kind of a mute point too. But um, what do you notice here? You notice a bunch of just straight lines. And you know, if you find yourself in a situation where it makes sense, all of the numbers in the random registration um, number would have just straight lines above or below, that can happen, but that's gonna be more rare. In this case, you can identify numbers that should not have a straight line above and or below. And Actually, we happen to have both a five and an eight. We just saw a beautiful overstamp that had both a five and an eight in it. This one, there is also a five and an eight, and I want you to look above those numbers. A seven should come before that eight. What is it? It's a straight line. Do you know of a seven in any font that has a straight line uh, at the bottom? No. Same thing with um, the number four. Uh, if you look at the five, a four should come above that, and you just see a straight line. So then below that, there's another straight line, and that should be a six. Um, now, I guess, depending on the font, that could potentially be possible, but, um, and then you look at the zero. What should come below that? A one, and a one doesn't start with a straight line at the top. It doesn't. So this is an example of a bad overstamping. And it's really easy, once you get this down, it's really easy to see, it's really easy to identify. I wanna show you another good over stamp. I have a lot of examples. There's a lot out there. Over stamping is a really a great tool to use to authenticate too. Um, now, just because there isn't an over stamping at all does not mean it's counterfeit. 
Um, let's be clear, this does not help in those bags. This is only gonna help when you have an overstamping in a bag. But, um, and then sometimes the overstamps again are just not as clear, but just even being able to make out just a little bit is super helpful. The more you do it, the more you test yourself and practice that, the better off you're gonna be. And where is this important? I mean, yes, we have tools online where people freely give their advice and help you, right? They can help you determine if a bag is authentic or not. But this is more helpful for those people who are maybe purchasing a bag, maybe at higher price, it's been around for a while, where being able to do this comes in handy is if you're out and about and you're thrifting or you're at you know, another type of sale, a garage sale, or uh, a, um, what do they even call them? I forget, oh my gosh. You know, the market things, the whatever. If you're out and about, um, this can be helpful for you, right? You might not have the opportunity to sit and wait on an answer. Also, if a bag comes up online at a really great price, a bag that you want, knowing these tips can also prove to be helpful, even if you're not a really great authenticator, right? If you have a lot to learn still. Knowing this, knowing how to read a good overstamp can be immensely helpful for you when you're trying to get something quick and potentially or ideally a little bit cheaper or maybe just more rare. So that's why it would be important to put a little bit of time into understanding this method. Um, okay, so here is another overstamp. So I, again, I have lots of red options, but I wanted to show one that wasn't as clear to see if maybe I can help you to see what I see as well, okay? And here we have, um, this is going to be a, a it happens to be a 1994 Creed, but this is gonna be one of those Creeds that actually has a style number. And it's A4B-9945. All right, and honestly, the overstamp, it's not very obvious. It's there, you can definitely see it, but it's not like super obvious as it was in that first example I gave you. But what can you point out here? And that's what I want you to look at. What sticks out to you? And for me, I'm going to go above those letters and or numbers that should just have dots, okay? And in this case, B, what comes above the B? An A. A, and actually you should have two dots, but because maybe the picture is a little bit shadowed, because um, you know, that has a lot to do with it too, how people photograph things. Um, maybe the picture uh, isn't that great, or even the stamp wasn't as um, prominent above that other, um, the other side of the B you do see a dot, you definitely don't see a line. It is a dot, so that is a good sign. And then also above the five. What comes be above before five? Again, the four, and it has a dot. And you do see those very clearly in this. And so this counts to me as a good overstamp, an overstamp that I can look at and look at this creed and be like, oh, there is a good overstamp. That is an authentic bag. So was it helpful? I don't know, I hope so. Um, I did wanna go ahead and throw in another creed here. And this is just a made in New York City creed. And this one doesn't happen to have any numbers below it. They can, they will. There are some authentic that don't have um, numbers below them. I wanted to point this out because even though this is a pretty well-known thing, not everybody knows it. And this is gonna be another really easy, quick tip in helping to identify that a bag is authentic for you. And that is that made in New York City. Guys, to this date, no one has identified a counterfeit made in New York City vintage coach bag. So if you have a creed that states specifically made in New York City, then you can be pretty confident that that bag you're about to pick up, purchase, um, invest in, whatever, you can be pretty confident that it is an authentic vintage coach bag. So yeah, I hope you found these tips helpful. 
I would love to hear what your thoughts are on this video in the comments below. What could I have maybe explained better? Um, what questions are you still left with? And also, I, um, I thought about, you know, pre-creeds. I thought about adding other things into it, but I wanted to keep this a little bit more simple. That term pre-creed, it's thrown around a lot. I see it thrown around incorrectly. Do you have questions about that? Should I do a video on what pre-creed means and all of the examples of actual pre-creed bags? Would that be helpful for you? If it is, comment below, let me know. Um, like this video if you liked it, give me a thumbs up and check out my Facebook group, Vintage Coach Eye Candy, if you're really interested in seeing just beautiful pictures of Vintage Coach bags and other people's collections, and if you wanna share your own. Um, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.